I'm out here checking on my hives. I pulled them out a few days ago of my bee barn. And right now they are lined up across my deck. Uh, the temperature this morning was 25 degrees below Fahrenheit. Um, right now it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit above zero. I brought my hives out because they'd been inside for so long I wanted them to be able to do a cleansing flight. So, I lost some colonies, as expected, but some survived, which is always awesome. And what I did is I got some 8 millimeter black plastic and lined the deck to protect it from bee poop, but also because that black plastic attracts the sun rays and warms things up. So I've got the black plastic down, and then I've got pink foam board insulation down, and then I've got two by sixes on either side, and my polystyrene hives are on top of that pink foam board. Insulation is crucial, but so is airflow. So I use open bottom boards. The hives I use are from Paradise Honey. I absolutely love them. So when I got my hives out and put them on this pink board, I uh, made sure that the 8 millimeter plastic was uh, long enough and wide enough so that I could wrap it not only underneath, but also over the top of the hives. And I tried something new. Uh, a friend of mine, Stephen George, who's a longtime beekeeper, very successful at keeping bees alive up here in the subarctic, turned me on to oil pan heaters. Up in Alaska, we kind of make do with what we have, and we create things when we need them sometimes. So Stephen told me, 5-watt oil pan heaters, and I wrote it in my notes as 50-watt. So I ended up with 10 50-watt oil pan heaters. And then I realized they were going to be too hot. So I put a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood on either side after I had siliconed them to a piece of aluminum to disperse the heat. So we have the oil pan heater on a sheet of aluminum with 3 quarter inch plywood on either side of that. And then I put black tar paper on the outside of the wood. And those are between my hives, so that at least one wall of my hives is warm for the bees. So as I'm looking at the hives right now, and I'm watching the wind blow in the trees, and looking at the temperature, and freezing my hands, um, I've got the black plastic up on top of, uh, uh, I've got the oil pan heaters plugged in behind the hives on a power strip that plugs into the outside of the house. And I've got those on a piece of wood because I don't want anything melting or catching on fire. And then that black plastic goes over the tops of the hives. So it's on top and hangs over the front of the hives a bit. And then I've got firewood on top of them to keep the plastic from blowing up and away and keep the wind out of the hives a little more. I did not put hive reducers in yet because when I pulled the hives there was a lot of dysentery inside and that was gross. There was a lot of dead bees but I had put two insulated racks between the bottom board and also the deep box. <clears throat> when I realized that was a really big opening I started making one inch slated racks that worked well for me uh, and it left enough room for the air to circulate in the hive and the dead to fall to the bottom without blocking the um, entrance. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so right now the hive entrances are open and that was because the bees, once they get outside, they wanted to do some cleansing flights and it was a poop storm, which was great to see actually. They also wanted to clean the hive and they were pushing the dead out. So I didn't want to interfere with that. And I wanted to get those dead bees out as soon as possible. Along with that, I wanted to uh, remove the hives that the colonies had wintered in and replace them with clean hives because inside there was a lot of dysentery. One of the mistakes I made was with some of the hives, I left a pollen patty in at the end of the season, and our temperatures dropped pretty quickly, and I didn't do a final check. I just got them in the bee barn as soon as I could, and the hives that had the pollen patties got dysentery. It was hard to tell from the inside of the bee barn of exactly which hives got it, so I did a test from each hive and used my handy beekeeper special microscope 
and um, looked to see if there's any nosema, and there wasn't, gratefully. And I'm going to attribute that to the fact that I treated them for nosema before they got hived up, because our winters can be very long and are always severe in one shape or form or another. And if we even just have a hint of nosema, they have so much opportunity, uh, that virus has so much opportunity to spread through our colonies through the winter and decimates them, and then decimates our equipment as well. I also did a oxalic acid mite treatment right before I hived them up and before they got into a tight cluster. You want the bees not completely clustered up when you do that vapor treatment because you want the vapors to permeate the hive. And if they're in a tight cluster, the vapors can't get through that um, group of bees and kill all the mites. So I've got no mites and no nosema. I've got hives that have made it through the winter. This is a great thing. They're actually kicking some serious butt. Hive entrances are open right now, but it's windy and it's cold. So I've got a piece of pink foam board stretching the length of the hive entrances uh, to block the wind and a piece of three-quarter inch plywood <laughs> leaning up against that to keep that from blowing away. I've got all the hives right next to each other, so they're all sharing those walls and they're all sharing the heat from those oil pan heaters. We had a, a warm spell where it got to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and so I was out there looking at them, and I had some um, sugar syrup, one-to-one, -one, just in case, and a bee flew on my glove, and it had some syrup on it, and boy, that bee went to town on that syrup. And they really don't have any fresh water right now because all we have is snow, and it's so dang cold. So I went ahead and put my top feeders on and put some syrup in it, even though everyone said not to, period. What's the worst thing that's going to happen is it's going to freeze. And it doesn't affect the bees because the top feeder doesn't touch the bees. The bees go up into the top feeder and then crawl down to get to the liquid. So um, when I checked the hives the other day, the bees were getting syrup, which was great to see. I'm sure that today they're frozen. The syrup's frozen. That's okay. Because everything freezes here in the springtime. But then everything thaws out as we head towards summer. That's it for now. Thanks for listening.